Hey folks, I have read your goals and objective drafts and have provided feedback to you in your rubric as well as on your paper. Remember we've switched to box view for inline grading. So you're gonna to wanna to look for all the highlighted areas as well as any note, um, their post-it notes on your document for feedback. The majority of the feedback you're gonna get from me is gonna be in the inline grading tool on your actual paper. The rubric I'm going to use to assign points. As you go through this, um, the feedback that you've been provided, my encouragement is to begin to think about your revisions and how you'll make adjustments to your current tool um, in preparation for your final version. It is important to understand the reason that this is such an important document. The goals and objectives that you will develop now will guide you through 618, 619, and 620. So 618 is about teaching strategies and 619 is about curriculum um, assessment and evaluation. And then 620 is the actual application of all the concepts that you've learned in a, in a formal process, um, kind of pulling all the loose ends together. So it's important for you to have goals and objectives that are broad enough um, and related enough to your nursing um, educator competencies that they make sense for you. We do not want you to get it halfway through 619 and realize that there's nothing that you're doing in 619 that relates to your goals and objectives at all. The idea is that you'll develop their goals and objectives and that in 620, um, one of the assignments that you have in 620 is to evaluate at what interval you have accomplished each of those goals and objectives. So two things. One, know that we're serious. You're actually got to do all the things that you say you're going to do. And two, begin to track your progress. So once you get a final version of your goals and objectives, keep a copy with your clinical notes and begin to jot down notes when you note something in your practicum log that says you've met an objective. Jot down that date with the corresponding goal and objective so that you have a running timeline or running log of when you've accomplished each of those objectives um, and then when you finally accomplish a goal because the, the the idea is that you will accomplish all the things you set out to accomplish so you want to be very thoughtful about it um, this is your nurse educator competency book it has all of the NLN core competencies in it if you do not have this book um, it is a required book but if you're currently using the PDF version that's provided to you in the course that's okay um, just know that you've got to have some version of it and that you need to understand it so when you think about your goals your goals really need to be focused on your skill and your development so if one of your um, goals is to function as a change agent then begin to think about what does that look like from a um, from a development standpoint. So if we know that competency five is functioning as a change agent, an appropriate goal for the, for you would be that um, by the end of nursing 620, this graduate student um, nurse will demonstrate, um, demonstrate advanced skill in the role of a change agent within the practicum environment related to this topic. So um, maybe it's, um, um, a change agent related to um, policies regarding um, breastfeeding. There, that you want to do something that stirs up a change in your organization related to breastfeeding compliance or recommendations. Think about what that goal looks like. It's very much focused on you and your skill development as a change agent. And all of your goals need to be that um, to have that kind of structure to them so that you have a time frame that you're going to accomplish it, that you're referencing yourself as the graduate student nurse, that you're referencing a um, NLN competency in some way and making it personal in some way related to your practicum environment. Um, whether you are, uh, maybe you're dealing with undergraduate students or graduate students or, or hospital nurses in an emergency room, you want your goal to have a really nice blend of um, a time frame, a population you're working with, and it needs to clearly connect with an NLN um, core competency. Now, there are times that you may use one or two competencies in a goal. Um, when you begin to blend lots of competencies in a goal, it becomes much more difficult to say that you've met it um, because it becomes more vague. So I'm going to encourage you to really think about, okay, if I have four goals and I've touched on four competencies, do my goals specifically relate to my own skill development? Element. Am I demonstrating it? Am I um, functioning as? Am I facilitating something? But it needs to reference you.
And your, all, your objectives are about your process. They um, specifically deal with the things that you will do in your practicum or um, your, your practicum experience that will help you accomplish the goal you said you want to accomplish. And you're going to use the skills that are listed under each of your um, of your NLN competencies that are provided in your book, um, skills or attributes, I'm not sure which uh, word your book uses. You're not going to copy them verbatim, um, but you're going to get the general idea of what does it mean, you know, if we're talking about being a change agent. So your book says when you're looking at a change agent, to model cultural sens sensitivities, integrate long-term innovative and creative perspectives in a nurse educator, participate in interdisciplinary efforts, evaluate organizational effectiveness, implement strategies, provide leadership um, in the parent institution, or promote innovative practices, or develop leadership skills. All of those are things that a change agent does. So when you begin to write your objectives, they need to relate somehow to those attributes of a change agent. If you have listed things that can be done once and checked off, um, write a lesson plan, check, um, teach a lesson, check, um, conduct a um, post-clinical debriefing, check. Those are not objectives, those are tasks. Those are things that can be done once and checked off. You want to be able to broaden that and be able to say, um, if you want to demonstrate skill at debriefing, um, let's say you're debriefing after simulation, then an, a, an appropriate objective would be that you would um, facilitate debriefing post-simulation um, in a variety of settings. That says, I'm going to go to multiple simulations and I'm going to do the debriefing for different things versus facilitate a debriefing after simulation that that's a one and done and that's going to be too narrow um all of this feedback has been provided to you my, my hope is one of the the challenges and and i'm not a big fan of having this be the very first assignment but it has to be the very first assignment um because you got to get moving is that that this is hard and and so often we think oh i got this and and we bang it out and then we move forward and then and then you get feedback and then you cringe it's like man i thought i had this um and then and then you don't have it and then you're disappointed and it's the first week um know that i know that um but the reason that you're given substantial feedback the reason that you're encouraged to make revisions and rewrite the reason you're given a draft at all is because it's important so take that feedback and really process it and apply it and make um, changes know that um, if you make your changes to the draft and you submit it as your final graded version which I think is due in week three I think it's week three's assignment um, after I'm done grading the teaching philosophies next week any of the any of the final versions that are posted, I will try to make time to go in and grade those for you so that you have feedback um, as a pretty quick turnaround. It is expected that before you submit clinical log number one that you have been in the practicum setting at least once. Um, my goal is to get you approved as quickly as possible, but, but the rate limiting step is um, your ability to kind of pull the feedback together and get things posted for submission and be graded. So know that the earliest that if if you have if your draft was not approved for um, to start your practicum now, that the earliest I'm going to look at them again, and that would be your final version that would be submitted for grading in week three. I will try to do that next week after I grade your teaching philosophy papers. Um, if you are unclear about feedback or you want to discuss your feedback, know that I'm here. I'm happy to, um, to, to walk through that feedback with you. I am leaving tomorrow to go on vacation. I am not falling off the grid. I'm getting on a train. Um, so I will be taking a train from Washington, D.C. to California. So I, I will... I will be relaxing and trying really hard to take in the sites, um, but I am not falling off the grid. So I will be very available by email um, so we can exchange emails and, and connect if we need to. Um, okay, I think I've covered everything. Um, let's talk just briefly about your philosophy, your um, teaching philosophy paper next week. Folks, the biggest mistake people make with this paper is they wander all over creation and they never provide a concise um, teaching philosophy. What is it that you think about teaching and learning? Um, what is your um, theoretical underpinning? And tie all that together. I find that a really good way to structure this paper is to begin the paper with, this is my teaching philosophy, um, and then spend the rest of the paper addressing the rubrics and the, the questions that are posed to you. I think that um, keeps you out of kind of wandering as you, as you um, move forward 
in your paper. I'm looking to see if there's anything else I need to tell you. Okay, to be clear, your teaching philosophy or your teaching values, beliefs, and goals. Okay, values, beliefs, and goals. If you are succinct in telling me what your values, beliefs, and goals are, then you can hit everything else. Keep in mind that your teaching philosophy, your values, beliefs, and goals needs to have a theoretical underpinning. What theory supports your values, beliefs, and goals? And can you say that succinctly in a couple of sentences? Um, you know, it'd be great if we could like make a bumper sticker out of it, but that's just, that's too concise. But I do want you to be very clear. Think about if somebody walked into an elevator and said, hey, you know, tell me about your teaching philosophy and you had full, from floor one to floor 10 to tell them, you got to be able to be pretty clear about what you think, what you believe and what you value for t related to teaching um, to get that out pretty quickly. So I want you to be able to articulate that well. It's five to seven pages, um, title page, reference page. You need to support your ideas. Um, remember scholarly sources or peer-reviewed journal articles. Those should be um, your go-to sources when you're supporting any of your work. This paper lends itself to level one and level two headings at a minimum. Um, be sure that you're using APA, and remember that APA is not just headings and references and citations. It's also professional syntax. It's professional vernacular or taxonomy. Um, you want to use um, professional writing with good grammar as you move through this course, just like you've been expected to before now. So anticipate um, those things being evaluated as part of your grade as you move forward. As I went through all of your introductions, I'm always interested to kind of look for, for commonalities and what people have in common. Um, the person who lives, and the other thing I always look for is like, who is furthest away from liberty? So your classmate, um, Kristen, she lives in the UK. She wins the award for being the farthest from campus. Um, let's see. Deborah, your classmate, wins the award for having the most little ones. She has eight kids. I cannot begin to imagine um, how very tired Deborah must be. So um, I'll say a, a, a prayer for her. Um, there were several of you that had lots of kids. Um, I think Deborah had the one that had the most. The specialty area, going along with, with having large families, um, the specialty area that um, was most common actually was tied. I think it was almost tied. Labor and delivery in the emergency room um, were very, very close in who the areas that were most specialized. We have states that are most commonly um, represented in our course, Virginia and North Carolina tied, which is almost always, normally Virginia has a few more, but, but North Carolina is coming up there so that was pretty cool um, lots of fur babies lots of dogs um, but I don't know what's wrong with you people no one has beagles um, so I, I'm always interested to see kind of like how you spend your time and how many um, fur friends do you have so it was really cool to read all of your notes um, as you can see it is about four o'clock here Eastern Standard Time in Roanoke I live in Roanoke um, which is about an hour and a half um, southwestern Virginia away from Liberty um, and as you can see at four o'clock it is nap time so Gracie is the little dog I think I guess that's that's my right your left that that's Madeline that's crazy um, in just a little while they're going to wake up and they're going to realize it's d-i-n-n-e-r time and if I said the word they'd both wake up the other thing and don't tell anybody I told you but it really is nap time because it's a holiday and my dear husband is around the corner also napping so clearly I am the only one in this house working um, we also we have four um, active duty military members in our course, and we also have one um, spouse of an active duty military person. So especially on Memorial Day, we really want, really want to um, say thank you and, and pray blessings of praise and gratitude for these um, active duty service people and their families who sacrificed to let them be active duty. Um, it is, uh, for us, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a it's a, an important holiday you know we're a Navy family my husband and my, my son both served in the Navy um, we are incredibly grateful for for the folks that are willing to stand up for their country and especially on a day like Memorial Day when we remember those that did not come home um, we really want to want to say a, a special prayer for those in in our course and those that touch our lives um, who are willing to to stand on the front line um, so we really are, are thinking about you and grateful for you and, and for your families. Know that um, I am traveling this week, but again, I'm not dropping off the grid. I'm here to answer questions or concerns. Know that I'm here. I'm praying for you. Um, this is a fun course. It's got lots of nuts and bolts that really, my hope is will really um, support your um, 
you're learning as an educator, but it's a challenging course. And the first assignment is a doozy. So um, don't get tangled up in the points. Don't, don't panic if it's not the way you thought it was going to be. It's going to be okay. This is tough. Once you get it, you will really get it and it's going to be okay. So just don't get discouraged. <sighs> Take a deep breath. And, and begin to work on your revisions, reach out with questions or concerns. Um, do know that I'm here and I'm praying for you. Um, I am just a, a click away. Um, I hope you have a great week and a, and a good holiday. Take care.